So I've had the pleasure and the privilege to shoot and even own some very nice guns and some that are fairly unique or at least members of a very small and sort of exclusive group. But I don't think I've ever really had the pleasure of having a gun that I now can call my own because it was a gift to me of such uniqueness that it truly is the only one like it in the world. And a little bit beyond that, it also has a really cool story to go with it. I showed you this gun in a short preview back when it was very cold out and I couldn't spend a whole lot of time shooting, but I shot it a little bit and mentioned at that time this is the prototype, the hand-built prototype of the Bob Marvel model made by Nighthawk Customs. But there's a lot of things that separate this particular pistol from the ones that you can still order today from Nighthawk. Not things that make this one better or worse, or make the ones that you can order today better or worse, just that make this one different and distinct and very unique. It is, after all, a prototype. So when you make a prototype, it's, you've taken it a step beyond that proof of concept, and you're saying, okay, well now let me make one that is a real functioning item, and we're gonna throw all the bells and whistles at it, and then we'll start to think about what do we need to add, what do we need to take away. And that's exactly what this gun represents. Some of the things were taken away. One of the things that were taken away was this incredibly detailed stippling on the top of the slide. It's just incredible, and just glancing at it, you can go, wow labor intensive as heck yep absolutely so there's a lot of hours of some talented craftsmen going into doing that the production guns then they don't really have all that extra stippling on the top one of the other things that makes this gun completely unique is that it is completely carbon steel there's no stainless steel other than you know maybe very small elements like the barrel is stainless steel and there may be some small internal parts that are stainless but the frame and the slide all the majors are carbon steel. The serrations in the slide, the cocking forward and aft serrations that Bob did on this prototype are a little different than what you see in the production. These have sort of a double cut for each one and there are three in the front, five in the back. Those numbers are different on the production. Most of the key things, most of the key components are the same. Things like the front sight, this Ken site, which is designed by Bob Marvel, <laughs> sitting in a cut that's called the Bob Marvel Sight Cut, made for Bomar and Ken sites. Bob Marvel designed the extractor that's in this pistol. It is an internal extractor, and Bob designed it. Bob designed the guide rod and recoil spring assembly that's in this pistol, bears his name. Bob designed the sear that's in this gun, and the jig that makes it. The birth of this gun, in concept at least, goes back into the, the 1990s. Um, but it didn't really start to manifest into reality until sometime around 2007. It wasn't until 2011 slash 2012 that this particular prototype actually came to life and was built and finished. And again, it's, it's such an incredible honor for me to have this gun. Uh, knowing its history and knowing that there is a line of very successful, very high quality pistols made after this prototype. Bob designed this hammer, he designed the sear, he designed the strut, he designed the extractor, the recoil spring and guide rod. Those are not just things he hand fitted, he actually designed and created those parts and then hand fitted them into this. Of course, the slide and frame fit is typical Bob Marvel, tight as you can possibly imagine, fit. Actually, this one might be a little bit looser because Bob told me that he used this gun 
to do some testing and see how much he could take off of that slide frame fit before it started to affect 50 yard accuracy. So he's actually made this gun less accurate on purpose. Well, maybe not on purpose, but as part of his testing. The stippling on the top is not only intricate and very nice, kind of reminds me of a tree bark. And then you've got these vertical lines running along the center of that. And then you've got this really nice French line, French cut, Ooh, la, la. whatever you want to call it, that really helps to delineate. Here's where the stippling stops and the flat of the slide starts. This is a beautiful, beautiful handgun to look at and admire. It feels, of course, beautifully balanced. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. It is, of course, the Bob Marvel. So we've got that conical barrel, bushingless. You've also got a tapered guide rod so that when this slightly curved, slanted nose <laughs> is closed, everything is beautifully flush. So if you ever get a chance to meet Bob or even work with him, which I highly recommend, and I'm gonna talk about that later in this video, how you actually could do just that, you'll find out very quickly that Bob is all about the minutia. There is no detail too small for Bob to be interested in. And this gun, the creation of this gun and, and arriving at its design encompasses hundreds if not thousands of hours of testing and research and just thinking and trying things and, and all of that. This is a commander length pistol, but the way Bob designed it, it has 210 thousandths more travel than a standard commander. It has 90 thousandths more travel, this pistol, than a standard government model. Bob understands that that extra travel for the slide going all the way back coming all the way forward, that extra little bit makes a big difference in terms of reliability, good feeding, proper ejection, and all of that. And that's what, for years, has set his pistols apart from all the rest, that and dead-on accuracy. Speaking of dead-on accuracy, I am itching to start shooting this thing. So I've got a steel target set up down range. I'm going to start having a little bit of fun with this. One quick clarification or correction that I want to make. Um, I spoke at the range of the stippling on the top and I said that that was, uh, that was done away with in the production model. What I mean is not this organic looking stippling that covers the entire, entire top of the slide. That is still there on the Bob Marvel models. These lines in the center are what they did away with just because a little bit too intricate, a little bit too labor intensive and you know prototype not everything on a prototype always makes it to production so that's just one other piece that makes this particular prototype gun a one of a kind this video about this bob marvel prototype is really more about the story than it is about shooting but don't you worry there's going to be plenty of shooting starting right now i'm only 10 feet from that 10 feet <laughs> I'm only 10 yards from that target. Let's get warmed up a little bit. The only other time I shot this gun, it was freezing. And today it is sweltering, so I guess we're checking it out on both ends of the weather spectrum anyway. I knew eventually that flapper would fall. Man, this thing is so sweet. You want to talk about nice triggers? You want to talk about a great sight picture? You want to talk about the slide not locking back? Switching over to a Kimber, Kim Pro magazine. This is one that's got that extended base plate. Not an extended capacity. It's still an eight rounder. All right, let's see if I can get the, uh, the white hostage taker flapper. Well, I'll tell you what, as long as I can do 
what I'm supposed to do with trigger control and holding my sights where they belong, it puts them right exactly where the red dot of the front sight is. What's fairly incredible to me is that even if this gun didn't even shoot, I mean, even if, even if it barely functioned at all, it would still be incredibly valuable because of what it is. But on top of what it is, on top of the fantastic story of it, it's still an amazing shooter. Oh boy, does it feel good in the hand. What balance. I think I'm a little on the low side there. There we go. Okay, and the last of the ones I've got loaded up so far, by the way, they're loaded up with Say Sour Elite Performance 230 grain ball. I'm also gonna try some Sig Sour, I think 200 grain V Crown Full Metal Jacket in a bit. It's all about training with the same ammo you carry, and that's what I like the most about the SIG. And it is what I carry. Beautiful. Beautiful. Here's a quote direct from Nighthawk. Bob worked with several of our master gunsmiths to build one of his most popular custom models. This literally involved months of training and preparation. The time was well spent and has, and has produced what we consider to be one of the finest and most unique models we have offered to date. Okay, let's put some on paper. So we can see where we're hitting with this thing. Still 10 yards back. I think I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to try pretty much a center hold. I think that's the way Bob has this thing set up. Still shooting the Sig Sauer 230 grain ball. That one felt a little wild. Nice. Felt myself flinch there a little bit on one. And it looks like I sent a couple below the orange. Same ammo. Let me settle into my groove here. So let me talk about this gun. It's what you came here for, right? This blacked out rear sight. And front sight with the bright red fiber optic filament. Make for a nice sight picture, even against that orange. There's a great contrast.
the checkering on the front strap and, and back strap, 25 lines per inch. And these VZ grips with a rugged texture are helping to keep my sweaty hands on the gun. Just for fun and give you guys something to laugh at really loud. I'm going to try one hand. After all, Bob Marvel cut his teeth building bullseye guns, 45 ACP, 1911s. <laughs> okay, let's try that again with a seated magazine. Not quite bullseye style, but I don't really want to assume that funny stance. The key for me in this kind of shooting is uh, to not anticipate and jerk them low. And that's where having a really nice trigger like this comes in handy. so easy to break that shot when I think I'm where I need to be. Very nice. Very nice. I didn't even shoot my downrange camera. Gotta love that. Bob Marvel is old school and I say that with respect and affection because my dad was a master gunsmith and he too was old school. Hand tools were preferred over milling machines whenever possible, and a part was never replaced if it could be repaired instead. And many times, a part was never purchased if it could be made. Objects can be wonderful things, particularly when they have a story, and even better when their story is one of significance, possibly even historical importance. Holding this magnificent pistol is truly a treat to nearly all of the senses. And I will confess that I have more than once just allowed myself to absorb and appreciate it. For the eyes, of course, it is beautiful in its traditional 1911 appearance, made more interesting by the subtle design changes that make it a Bob Marvel, the French line at the top of the slide flats that leads into the intricate stippling that looks organic like the bark of a young tree. That texture covers the top of the slide from stem to stern and even wraps around to the rear on both sides of the hammer. The patina of this gun takes close examination to see beyond the beautiful rich finish but on inspection some light wear can be seen near the muzzle and other traditional places as well as some very small pitting that can be seen on the flats of the slide that demonstrate its service as an unfinished prototype that was exposed to many hands and many conditions. To the touch it begins with the familiarization of a 1911's commander length pistol that fits in the hand like no other. And then the subtleties of the tactile experience begin to appear. The glossy smoothness of the beaver tail and the grip safety against the 25 line per inch checkering of the mainspring cover. The secure feel of the VZ G10 grips and finely checkered front strap that secures your grip against all motion. The serrations are distinctive and wonderfully practical. They're slanted to the exact same angle as the grip of the 1911, and they're in lines of twin cut ridges. You can't find better gripping surface, and they're on the front and rear. For the ear, in addition to the nice clicks and snaps provided by hammer and trigger, is the sweetest sound when the slide is manually cycled. You can literally hear how tight the slide is to the frame, and yet it runs as if it's on ball bearings and the muted sound of the flat recoil spring flexing over the solid guide rod just inside the dust cover completes the melody. And when it comes to sensory appreciation of firearms there's seldom a discussion of the olfactory connection. For me this might be one of the most powerful of all. One of the first things I do with a new gun is smell it. I love to breathe in the combination of metals, oils, polymers, and whatever other materials, in rarer cases wood.
Different lubricants and cleaners can interact with a gun in a way that perfume does with a person. Similar but unique. A chemistry all its own. And Bob Marvel provided me with a sensory powerhouse for the nostrils here. I really must ask him someday what he used to oil this gun, but I can best describe the aroma this way. Imagine finding an old barn somewhere in the damp and gray east coast, and then imagine hunting through that barn to areas that have not felt the fall of human foot in decades. In your mind's eye, remove the old pile of lumber and discarded tools to expose an ancient Packard, or maybe a Studebaker if you prefer, sitting on a dirt floor under a thick layer of dust. Lift up the hood, which creaks loudly in complaint. Lean into the engine bay. Put your face close to the oil-soaked manifold. Now breathe in deeply. That smell is the smell that this pistol had when it came to me from Mr. Marvel. And while I admit I do tend to prefer more pleasant-smelling oils and cleaners on my workbench, there was something perfect about the way this smell triggered in my brain to tell me just how rare and special this object is. And although I have cleaned and relubricated it more than once since, it still has the aroma as if it penetrated the steel itself. And I hope it has. It's truly an honor to have this pistol. It's not only a bona fide collector piece and part of American firearms history, but it's a fantastic shooter and it's a great personal possession. I can strip this gun down and view right on my workbench the evolution of the Nighthawk Bob Marvel model including elements like the slide stop on this prototype that doesn't always lock the slide back. That testing resulted in a change to the final version, proving <laughs> that folks like Bob Marvel and Nighthawk never stop improving. Six Hour provided a lot of the ammo I'm using in today's video. And when they don't provide it, I buy it anyway because this is my carry ammo. Six Hour Elite Performance V Crown in its various configurations, obviously for caliber and bullet weight. This is 200 grain jacketed hollow point V Crown. I got 10 rounds of it. Let's try that on a fresh spot on the target using a 10 round magazine just for fun. And remember with SIG, it's train like you carry, and that's why. You get the same velocity, same bullet weights, same feel for the ammo in their ball ammo for the range as you do in the jacketed hollow point stuff you're going to carry. And that's what I like a lot. I also love the holes that the uh, V-Crown punches. So let's see how we do with it. <laughs> you're thinking, wee who? <laughs> okay, let's see how I do with it. I have a habit of holding a little bit of a six o'clock hold. And you can see that this gun is set up to be dead on point of aim, point of impact. Well, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this story about this incredible Bob Marvel prototype pistol the prototype for the Nighthawk Custom Bob Marvel model. 
again, it is such an honor to have this gun and to, to call it mine and for it to have been a gift from Bob. Um, it really leaves me speechless. And if you watch the channel, you know there's not much that leaves me speechless. But I can tell you this, you can have an incredible experience yourself if you're interested. Do you know Bob still teaches classes that you can take on how to build your very own custom 1911 that is incredible, just like this one that I'm holding, which is the one I built when I went and sat with Bob for seven days and learned every single step in how to build this amazing gun. And it is an amazing gun. I would put this 1911 that I built up against pretty much any 1911 that you want to put on the table as far as accuracy, reliability, quality, fit, <laughs> all of that stuff. If you want that experience, I'm going to put information below this video where you can follow a link and actually see the information about these classes that you can take. Uh, this is like, uh, this is one of those opportunities like having been able to train with Jeff Cooper or, or something similar to that. You know, don't find yourself a few years from now saying, man, I wish I would have done that when I had the chance. You have the chance, do it. So I'm going to finish up with a few rounds through my custom 1911. Thanks for watching. Hey, while I'm at it, I want to thank a few people. I want to thank Tactical AR500 Targets for providing this target that you've seen in today's video and so many others. I absolutely love this target. You can save money on those targets. If you look down below, there's a link with the discount code. Go use that. I want to thank Sig Sauer Elite Performance Ammo for providing a lot of the ammo that was used today. I want to thank Bob Marvel for, you know, everything. And I want to thank my patrons for making this video possible. You guys rock.